Jordan from BNP Campers. Just going to do a hand of a video on your Leica. Uh, it's an Eco Vip, and it's on the Iveco chassis. Your uh, sort of chassis numbers and things like that are just there, and Iveco original plate is this one down here. Although the one that you actually want to go off, um, I think is just inside the door here or somewhere. There's a there's a Leica version of it. Um, that you need to go off of. I'll probably find that in a bit. Um, so I think it's weighted at 4,200, so 4.2 ton. Um, just so, just so that you know that. I think I'm, I'm sure there's another one somewhere. Um, so on the left hand side, we've got your washer fluid, brake fluid just here. Uh, see this big red pipe here goes directly to the turbo. So just careful on this left hand side of the engine. Um, intercooler here at the very top keep the uh, turbo running cool um, engine coolant sits up here in this reservoir at the top engine oil goes in through this cap just here and your engine oil dipstick is this one just next door to that I believe this is your fuel filter um, because it goes straight back here or yeah it goes directly here to the fuel filter there so something to do with the fuel um, whatever it is uh, Engine management unit, so your ECU all over here on the right hand side and your engine battery is this one just here. So if you needed to jump start the vehicle for any reason, that's the one you'd go to. Although saying that we haven't had any, any problems with it starting here on site. It's not a huge amount to show you on the passenger side apart from under the passenger seat, you've got this little unit down here, which is kind of like a sort of like a power supply unit almost. Um, the control panel, which I'll show you when we get inside, is actually really, really all-inclusive sort of thing. So nearly everything that you need is basically running off that control panel. So, you know, there's not really much to worry about around here, to be honest with you. Gas locker. So you've got space in here, as you can see, for your uh, refillable gas flow bottles. You can see they're being fitted. Um, turning the bottles on is anti-clockwise around to the left on this and clockwise around to the right turns them off. You got an auto changeover up here, so you don't need to worry about turning the gas on or off or which, whichever one on, you know, it do it all by itself. So as long as you've got both of the bottles on, you don't, you, it'll just carry on and carry on until it sort of runs out basically. Next cupboard along, you've got your diesel filling point down here. Turn this little cap whichever way it will go. And then you can get your key in there to open up this. This is where you fill your diesel up from. You've got loads of storage inside this little cupboard bit in here. So that goes right way through to the other side. Um, and your filling point for the gas flow system runs along here and goes down to here. So when you come to refilling your gas flow point, it's just there. Fresh water inlet is just here. So if you want to fill up your fresh water, that's where that goes in. Big uh, garage at the back is here. There has been a couple of extra bits and pieces put in here at some point, a little sort of cupboardy bit made up uh, by a previous owner. Um, but you know, you've got a light in here. Various bits and pieces. You can get into the, you know, in, from the inside into here um, if you should need to. But that's just completely down to you as you know, not sure whether you'll need to do that or not. I'll just sit down a second to show you this properly. So you see here it says WC, so you, this is your toilet and your wastewater drain off points. So the front one here is what drains out your toilet. So if you see that pipe there, it runs all the way across to the other side and you can just about see on the video there, I will point it out to you when we get around the other side. But this, when you pull this open, which it is at the moment, whatever goes down the toilet should come out over the other side. So if you want to put something underneath there to drain it into, you can do. Um, or if you're over a draining point, you can just, you know, drop it out. So this is the one for your toilet here at the front. And then this one here, which is also already pulled out, is your wastewater drain, which is this one here. All right. So quite simple. Um, I will show you how the actual toilet works as well um, and work out why that. Oh, there you go. Just push it a bit harder. I was being too gentle with it. 
Right, so that's your toilet draining points down there and your wastewater drain. Um, tow bar at the back and another bit, little bit of storage in here. There is a little um, split pin in there, so you just pull that out and then you can open that up. Ladder to get up onto the roof is solid enough to, to actually get up on it, obviously. Loads of storage inside this side as well, and it's just the same, it's the same garage as the other side of it. And that toilet draining point is this one just here, like I say. Boiler vent is this one just here. So I've got the boiler on at the moment and I can feel the hot air coming out through the bottom of it. The two fridge vents are these ones here. So if you wanted to get, you know, if you wanted to get to any of the burner or anything like that inside there, you can do that from there. And your uh, step bits and pieces are here. So you step in and out, which is this dial here. Once we get in the van, um, the main bits and pieces I want to show you are just the, the control panel to start with. Um, and, you know, we'll go on to the other stuff afterwards. Um, up here, so it's a little bit hard to see, but you've got this little dial just here, which if you watch, if I turn it, is like how dim or bright the control panel is. And it's a bit difficult to get it absolutely right. And it is always a little bit dim. Uh, but when you get it about right, it is quite easy to see. So, turning the lights on and off, you push and hold on the button. So if you think it's not working, it's because you need to push and hold on it. So lighting on. And then once you've done that, you'll then obviously be able to use all of your lights, wherever they might be. Um, so you've got various lights at the top there. Lights just here. So you've got all of these, and obviously the habitation check has been done. So all of the lights work, um, pretty much, you know, everything really should work. But once you've done, turn that lighting on button on, you can then obviously go ahead and do your lights. It also, just what I point out, it does also work this as well. So you've got an electric skylight up here, but without the lights on button on, that doesn't work. So the lights basically powers that, that switch, all right? Awning light. So once you turn that one on there, awning light comes on. Pump, I've already got that one on and I wanted to leave that on just so I could prove to you that there's no leaks anywhere because if I had the pump on like it is now and the pump was running and running and running, that would basically tell me that there's something wrong and there's a leak somewhere or, or whatever. But the pump's not running, <clears throat> water comes out nicely. And when I turn the tap off, if you listen, pump turns itself off. So that's what you're looking for really. Um, when you get into the van, if you want to go ahead and start using your hot water and all that sort of thing, pump on and then pour your hot water through. If the hot water doesn't quite come through, uh, it usually means there's not quite enough water in the boiler. So <clears throat> you basically just need to carry on pulling that through until the boiler's full, which is when the water will come out nice and clearly. And then you can go ahead and turn that off. If the pump carries on and carries on, then basically you need to then switch it off um, and just make sure that you've got enough water in the tank. Um, but yeah, that's about it really. Um, the gas cooker, obviously that's, you know, completely di directly from your uh, gas low bottles. You've got an ignition on here, which to be honest is quite unusual for a Leica or, or any kind of um, imported vehicle. They tend not to have the ignition. So nice high spec on this one. They all there, they're all working exactly how they should. Uh, just make sure there's nothing to show you down here. All right, so you've got a uh, gas isolator just here, which is for your cook, uh, for your hob just up here. So if you wanted to isolate that from the gas for any reason, then that's how you do it from just there. Where you would do it from, sir. Uh, so, yeah, the other ones here, and there's a bit of a random way to do it, sorry about that, but uh, the other ones here, aughts and 12 volt sockets. So, basically, turn those both on, and then, you know, anything that's dotted around the vehicle um, that may have been added extra, or any 12 volt sockets that might be around the vehicle, 
will all come to life. Um, so there'll be one in there, look. So you've got a 12 volt socket down there at the bottom. So any of those things will come to life when you turn the 12 volt socket button on. And aux, like I said, tends to be just sort of like things like um, ignition or extras that have been fitted and things like that. So just basically turn it all on when you come into the vehicle if you want to use it at uh, all. Button down the bottom here says levels. And then it comes up telling you fresh water level. Oh, I won't press that. Huh? Fresh water level, waste water level and waste two. So basically there's two waste tanks well, there might, there might be two waste tanks, so they put them on all, you know, they put it on all of them just in case. Um, and your battery levels as well. So 12.2 in your engine battery, 12 in your aux battery. So that's your leisure battery. So that's all of your levels in there. Um, the fridge, just shut this bathroom door a sec, stop it knocking around. The fridge is nice and simple. It's an automatic energy selecting fridge or an AES fridge. Um, and so literally all you have to do to turn this fridge on, if you've got gas switched on and you turn the fridge on, it will light up on gas. And then after a couple of hours or so, the fridge will be cold inside. At the moment, I've got it on and it is lit up on gas. Um, if you had a hookup plugged into the vehicle and no gas, when you turn it on, it will work that out and then it will work via the electric hookup. And if you don't have either of those things and the engine was running, you would turn it on and it would choose 12 volt and it would basically work via that. So it literally does it all on its own. Um, the reason, you know, you basically you only use uh, 12 volt when your engine's running because you shouldn't ever leave your gas on whilst you're driving. Um, and also you obviously can't have a hookup plugged into the vehicle whilst you're driving either. So you do need an extra way of, of, of keeping the fridge cold. Um, the motorhome fridges and caravan fridges are all the same. You can't really, when you, the way to use them basically is you need to get the fridge cold first, either via the gas, which I've got it on at the moment, or electric hookup, uh, and then switch it over to 12 volt for when you're driving, um, because the 12 volt doesn't really get the fridge cold on its own. Um, so if I just turn it off quickly, I'll just show you how simple it is. Um, so like I say, if you're going to go away tomorrow morning, I would advise you the night before you go, just come out to the van, um, either turn the gas on or plug a hook up into it either way and just turn the fridge on. The AES light will come on and then basically it will just do its thing. It will try and light up on gas. If there isn't any gas, it will then switch over to 240 volt. If there's no mains plugged in, it will then switch over to 12 volt and so on. It will just keep going until it finds the correct energy. All right, so that's that. The oven and grill is here, nice and simple. Um, you've got the grill at the top, obviously, and there is a burner down the back here, which is the oven. You've got the um, rotisserie bit just here and a light at the back. So literally all you have to do to light it up on the grill, push in and round to the right to get it to start going, basically to allow the gas through, and then put a little igniter or a flicker in there to light this up. So push in and round to the right to allow the gas to come through for the grill, or push in and round to the left to allow the gas through for the oven. You have also got a little safety catch on there so it won't open until you lift this up and pull it. Okay, the wardrobe is nice and simple. Um, you've got this button here, so that turns the, the light turns off when you shut the the, uh, the wardrobe door, basically. Um, tilt and turn aerial just here, so you loosen off this bit at the top, push the the aerial up and twist it around as wh wherever you need to do it. Um, if you're on a campsite, a uh, little tip, basically, if you look around and, and copy everybody else's, um, because they're probably already in the right place anyway. So put your area up, twist, twist it around as, as and where you need to. Um, once you're in the sort of correct position, you can turn your TV aerial booster on. So you get the little red light on and that should already all be wired up to your TV point, which is in the, inside that little sliding locker back there. Um, if you put it on and nothing happens so you know when you when you put it in nothing happens you probably just need to adjust this a little bit basically um but like i said if you're on a campsite you can just copy everybody else if you're not on a campsite it's not the end of the world because you can look online and see 
you know, it will tell you exactly what you need to do and all that sort of stuff. But, um, you know, it's not really something I'd worry about too much. It's pretty simple. Um, gas isolators down here. So you've got boiler, fridge, and what's that? Uh, can't actually tell what that is. That might be heating or something, perhaps. Um, basically, if you wanted to isolate the um, the gas for any particular appliance, like I showed you in the front there, you've got the isolator for the um, the, the three burner hob. Turn these ninety degrees so they're laying flat rather than uh, upright, and then basically that'll isolate the gas from there. Um, you've got a load of service booklets and paperwork for this particular vehicle. Uh, the original Leica Eco Vip paperwork is there as well so if you want to go through there and have a look at any of that it's all in here as well as any extra cushions that you may need to make the beds up and things like that so close this cupboard up now down here is just get to a place where i can sit here's your boiler um and the boiler is really nice and simple there's nothing technical about it whatsoever um so let me just I've got the boiler lit up at the moment uh, and it's currently heating the water up only. It's not doing any heating or anything like that, which is why there's no air being pumped out around any of these little vents around here. If I just point out to you why this has been done as well. So this bit down here is an automatic dropout. So basically when the temperature gets to a certain point, all the water will drain out of the boiler or it normally would. Um, at some point, a previous owner has put the Jubilee clip around it, which is the main way to do it, and put the peg on it as well. All things that we see day to day here. Um, I'm not gonna advise that that's a very, very good idea because if it gets to the temperature, uh, like, like I said, like minus temperatures sort of thing, uh, and that's still on there, if the boiler's full of water, what'll happen is it won't be able to drain out um, and then the water that's inside of it will freeze. And then all of your little, water pipes and bits and pieces around here well you know the, the water will expand when it freezes and then crack and then start leaking um so i don't tend to find it's a very good idea but if you're going to be using the van um throughout the year and you know that you're not going to be leaving this in storage over that sort of time um when it's going to get that cold then you don't need that that's fine you can do that no problem at all but if you think that you're going to be leaving this van in storage or not using the van enough over those cold winter periods, you need to take this off um, and, and make sure that you can drain the boiler out. If you want to manually drain the boiler out, obviously you don't need to take these bits off, but all you have to do is push the little red button down, and then once you've done that, all the water from inside the boiler will drop out onto the floor. But yeah, like I said, the reason, the reason people do that, sometimes even if you get a problem with one of these, sometimes you find that you can't put it, pull it back up to stop the boiler, the, the boiler from draining so sometimes people put those little clips in there just to stop that from happening it's not the end of the world um but just if you know you're going to be leaving it and it's if, you know if it's full of water and you know you're going to be leaving it over a really cold period you need to drain it out okay because this really is a couple of grand to fit to replace one of these and it's it's not straightforward so <laughs> it's uh something you need to look after really um the water pump is just there as well so that's the pump that you could hear running when I showed you earlier on when it turned itself off. So all inside this cupboard just here, quite nice and neat. Um, but yeah, so that's that really. I don't mean to scare you by saying any of that stuff. It's just that uh, the boiler is pretty much the most expensive part in this entire van, so you need to look after it. Um, the boiler settings are just here, but I'll just show you that in a minute. Back here, there's not really much else I'll show you, to be honest. Um, window back there, over here as well. It's quite nice that they're all sort of like set back a little bit as well. Um, fly screen cover there. Right, so behind this little curtain, you've got your boiler control. So true Mercurymatic C. So basically what that means is it's gas only. Um, so there's no electric way of using the boiler whatsoever. And if I can just reach over and show you so where i've got it at the moment you can see there i've got it at 40 degrees um, and the 40 degrees part basically means 40 degrees of hot water if i went up one 
I'm now at 60 degrees of hot water. So whatever's in the boiler at the moment will be heating up to 60 degrees. If I go back to the middle, all the lights will go out, including, so the, the green one is just basically on or off and the orange one means hot water. So if I go down one, the green light comes back on, but the orange one doesn't because there's no water being heated up because one down is heating only. So you can hear now, and I can feel hot air being pumped around through this vent here and all the other black vents so I don't around the vehicle. There's one there, there's one down there. There'll be one in the bathroom as well. There's one down there. So they're all over the place. Um, because it's quite a big van, they do need a few more just to get the, the you know, get, get it all properly circulating. Um, but yeah, so that's one down is heating only. If I go down two, the orange light will come back on again. Any second. And you can see there it says 60 degrees. And so at the bottom is heating and hot water at 60 degrees. So um, that's how that works basically. It's nice and simple. Uh, what people sometimes say to remember it is going up is your summer setting basically, because when you go up, you get hot water and no heating. And going down is your winter setting because you either get heating only or heating and hot water at the same time. So I'll turn that off now and I've had it on since just before the start of the video. If I just check, wait for the pump to come on. There you go, that's red hot. So what's that? About half an hour. The hot water was on for about half an hour and it's already hot. So that's how good the boiler is. That's how quick it heats the water up. Um, but yeah. So all from there, up is hot water only, down one is heating only, and down two is hot water and heating at the same time. Right. Bathroom. I know uh, Daniel did ask me to make sure that I showed you how the toilet worked. Uh, I've already shown you how it empties out from outside, but I will obviously show you how it works to actually flush it and use it inside as well. The shower is nice and simple. I'm not going to show you it working because I know it works, but also I'll just get soaking wet if I get in there and do it, so it's no good. Um, the on and off dial is just that one there. It's, it's so simple. Um, you can work that out in no time at all. Um, the only bits I really want to show you with the vehicle is you've got this sink just here. Again, nice and simple. It's literally left and right hot and cold water. Nice and easy. Um, this is the first one of these toilets I've actually used myself. and Well, not used, but <laughs> like shown. Um, I was looking around for a button because normally they've got a button for the flush. Uh, but basically all you have to do is push down on this, pump the water around. So if you, I'll just push it down a little bit. So that's pumping the water around, yeah? So that's water in there now. If I push down even further, the flap opens up and drains anything out into that tank. Does that make sense? So pushing down a little bit, pumps the water around the bowl and then pushing down that little bit extra actually opens up the flap and sends it down into the tank. So that is that, it's really, really simple. Like I said, I was looking for buttons and all that sort of stuff, but it's literally push down halfway for the, for the uh, fluid to pump around, push down all the way for it to drain out. That is it. Skylight up here, I'm just gonna close this before I forget to do it. Um, I'll just show you how that works as well, nice and simple. Okay, so you open it like this. Um, you have got a little switch just there which turns that light on. And this switch just here turns your lights on in the bathroom. Right, so I just wanted to show you that as well. Um, okay, so I'll just quickly run you through. I will show you what's in the cab as well. I just want to um, just show that as well. So they go into those little top bits there to stop it from moving around. So when you finish with the van uh, and you want to pack up and start driving off and that sort of thing, 
all you need to do really is come up to your control panel, go around and turn all your bits and pieces off. And then once you've done that, basically you, the back end of the vehicle is also switched off from the 12 volt power. Um, you can then go around, turn off your gas uh, in the locker. Really important that you do that because the last thing that any, you know, if you were in a car accident for any reason, obviously it's not very nice to say, but if you were, the absolute last thing that anybody wants is for gas, pressurised gas, to be pumping out from anywhere that may have been knocked or broken. So make sure that you turn your gas off before you start driving every time. Um, yeah, other than that, make sure your lockers are closed up, windows are shut, all that sort of thing. Um, but in the cab, uh, because it's an Iveco, it's a nice sort of big feeling cab. It's, it's almost, it feels like a small lorry almost. I mean, the van itself isn't actually that big, but the cab is, you know, really nice and powerful and also sort of hefty. Um, reversing camera up there. All the Garmin stuff here, I'm not sure if that's a sat nav, I'm, I'm assuming it's a sat nav, um, but we didn't fit that, that's all just stuff that's been left in there by a previous owner. Um, you got all the events just here, hazard lights, um, you know, various buttons for extra bits and pieces. Um, I'd imagine this is a heated windscreen switch. Um, your stereo in there works perfectly well. And you've got your um, fan controls, fan settings, fan temperature, all that sort of stuff. Um, all of your lights, they all turn on from in here. So lights on, lights off. Um, horn is on this left-hand stalk as well, and obviously as well as your um, indicators. You've got a six-speed manual gearbox down here, where reverse, you need to lift up on this, go over to the top left, and your handbrake is down here on the left-hand side as well. You've got electric adjusting mirrors and windows as well. So, to be honest, that's about it. I don't really know if there's much else to show you. Um, you've got the uh, the proper belts down here uh, that's you know already been fitted. So you've got the four seating um, belts. I'll just close this skylight down as well. I've just got that open up so I can show you how it works. Quite literally just pull it down like that on both sides and then put that back over like that. If you want it to be a little bit tighter, you can go around the other side, um, but it's only very slightly more. Uh, other than that, make sure this is down as well. Oh, I should have to. Right, there you go. <laughs> it's a good learning curve. Turn the power off the lights, turn the power on, and then... There you go. All the way down until it stops on its own. Right, there you go. Okay, so I think I've shown you everything I can. Um, if there's anything you think I've missed out or anything you want going over again, just let us know. Um, but otherwise, we look forward to seeing you soon to catch your van. Thanks very much.